morning and welcome to what I'm going to call the start of my labour story video. You might be thinking you don't look like you're in any pain or having anything going on and that is true. <laughs> um, tomorrow I'm booked in for an induction at the hospital but because I'm booked in for induction I have to go for a Covid test today so that is what I'm doing which is why I'm starting the vlog here. It is the, oh I've got to put my watch on, there's no way I'm going to walk upstairs. Today is the 30th of March, so I am 2021. So I am going for my Covid test this morning, there is a drive through testing centre in the car park of the hospital. Um, Phil doesn't need to be tested yet, I believe he'll be tested when he goes, like when I'm actually admitted to hospital. Um, but yeah. This, this is where we're at so this is kind of my first stage of baby arriving which is not a first stage that I ever expected to go through when thinking about this like from like being young of like having a little one you never think that you've never a COVID test before this time last year so yeah I'm going to do that this morning and then head back and then tomorrow I am having an induction which will be just about a week after my due date. I am, I'll talk to you more about it later. I'm basically being mechanically induced. It basically means that they're not going to use any hormones. They're using this new technique that they're doing with a balloon, which means that I remain low risk. I don't have to stay in hospital and I can be sent home, which is a bonus for me because I really don't want to stay in without Phil there and risk him not getting through in time um, for little one's arrival and not being with me so I do like the idea of that <laughs> that is like the top option that we could possibly have so I am going to head out to the hospital now um, my appointment's 20 past 11 and shockingly I'm actually early and on time so far it is 22 11 so 20 past 11 is my test should only take me 20 minutes to get there so cooking on gas it's probably the first time i've ever been on time for anything um so yeah i'm gonna grab myself some water to take with me and i will let you know how it goes made it back from my COVID test i survived it wasn't that bad um I would say it it feels uncomfortable and like a weird sensation it's more the weird sensation that's uncomfortable rather than it being painful and it <laughs> the thing that it makes me think is it's basically like tickling the back of your throat and the back of your nose and that's the sensation that's weird because you can't like like you have to cough and you have to like really rub your nose afterwards and it makes your eyes water um because you can't get to it um but yeah my eye absolutely streamed after she did it but my eyes stream anyway like if i've got cold like or like blocked sinuses or anything my eyes just water so yeah all done apparently i won't hear anything if it's negative but i will hear something if it's positive um <laughs> i almost got through the whole pandemic without a covid test um but obviously had to get one for little one's arrival but yeah that's us set ready for our induction tomorrow one thing i did want to quickly mention oh, i couldn't work out what that was on my foot um that did annoy me about the covid testing center was that the lady obviously could see that I was pregnant i also had my maternity notes on the passenger seat just in case um and there's probably a reason on the form for why i was getting tested and she was like oh is this your first baby and i was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and she was lovely and then she went which is my biggest pet peeve and the most annoying thing about being pregnant during covid and this pandemic is the words that she uttered which were so is this a lockdown baby <sighs> so annoying it is the most infuriate i'm not easily like miffed or annoyed but that question bugs the life out of me yes she was conceived in lockdown no, she wasn't be conceived because of lockdown. <laughs> she was planned like a year beforehand. <laughs> it just so happens that 
she arrived in the middle of lockdown and to be honest if I could have a pregnancy not in lockdown that would have been preferable let's be honest <laughs> um but yeah it just really really bugs me because like I know I've got friends that like Jason and Claire if you follow them on YouTube their story breaks my heart like they've been trying I don't even know how long and she has shared that she's basically had three miscarriages quite far on like almost 12 weeks each time she just shared her third I think it was last week and honestly my heart goes out to them and can you imagine if you've been trying for that long had that many disappointments and someone just went oh did you accidentally get pregnant in lockdown oh, whoops how annoying that would be and how upsetting it would be so just think I, did, I have posted something on my Instagram because it really, really bothered me. <laughs> it was kind of like the, the straw that broke the camel's back. There's like loads of people asked me. So she just tipped me off the edge. <laughs> but can you imagine being through all of that and then someone just trivialising the fact that you've actually been able to have a family? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, that's my rant for the day. I will check in with you tomorrow or if anything else happens today which i don't think it will but you never know um i'll check in with you tomorrow as we are heading to the hospital for my induction good morning today is the 30th of march 31st of march and today was meant to be my induction day um it my appointment was half 11 i've just had a phone call from the labor ward and they are ridiculously busy they are currently on divert so they have delayed my appointment um, not sure when to yet she said she'll give me a ring once things settle down so yeah let's just wait and see and see what happens and when I end up going in quick update at about quarter to three I believe it was we got a phone call from the maternity unit and they want us to go in at 4 30 it is now quarter past three so we're gonna set off in about half an hour just to make sure we're there on time etc so here we go this is the start of baby waffles addiction <laughs> and so yeah i'm actually quite excited about it i've been nervous about it for the last couple of days but today i'm quite i'm ready i'm ready for little one to be here so we're just doing the last couple of things phil's just we were on tidying and stuff so phil's just finishing off the bits that he's doing and then we are going to head to the hospital all hospital bags are packed just put the final bits in now with glasses and things literally the last thing that i need to take is you guys and my tripod and we are good to go last night um getting the kind of balloon fitted um not gonna lie it was not a pleasant experience <laughs> um but yeah it's fitted now <laughs> it took around i think f we were there about f three three and a half hours it was about three hours it took in total which i wasn't expecting otherwise i'd have sent phil home um main reason he stuck around was because um to start with they were like on the phone when they arranged the appointment they were like if you like three centimeters we can break your waters we'll do it there and then and then dad can come straight in but what they needed to do before they even got to that point was they needed to um monitor baby for half an hour on the monitor then assessed me and then by that point at the assessment point they kind of then installed it at the same time they then only needed to monitor me for another hour on the monitor before they let me go home by that point it was not like there was no need for phil to go home and come back because by the time he got home he would have just had to come straight back so yeah that was a bit of an evening so we didn't actually get in last night till about eight o'clock um so yeah that's that it's feels weird it doesn't feel uncomfortable it's just a bit odd <laughs> if i'm honest but yeah we'll see if it does its thing or not welcome to day three of 
baby waffle arrival um yesterday i got the balloon thing fitted and it is now almost 24 hours later and still nothing happened so they are only going to leave it in for 24 hours so we are back at the hospital now to get it removed the plan initially was for them to potentially break my waters induce me a different way not sure um however they rang me and said that they're still super super busy so they won't be doing that today anyway so they're just going to remove it assess me and then send me home so no well unless she decides to come herself no baby waffle today um so let's go and see what the crack is we might get a baby one day this week mm. <laughs> hello just got back from the hospital um we are on 1st of April, day three, I think I said earlier, um, of eviction, <laughs> for issuing her eviction notice. Um, yeah, I think today is the best news I've had so far. Like yesterday was a bit horrible, not gonna lie. Um, but today we, oh, what's the words? They removed the balloon, which was lovely, and it was like no fuss at all. Simple, easy, brilliant. Um, examined me, the midwife couldn't tell, so the doctor did a bit of a test, and apparently I am two centimetres, which is good. The in initial plan would have been to have broken my waters there and then, however, they are still backlogging. They've got a lot babies to be delivered at the minute um so they were like we won't be doing that today which is fine by me because i would much rather her come on her own um rather than being like hormonally induced so yeah they are gonna ring me in a couple of days which i actually also like the fact that they've not given me a deadline um they're gonna ring me maybe tomorrow or the day after to confirm a date to go in and potentially get induced that way like get my waters broken and then hormones if needed etc etc so yeah it's all going good but basically she was meant to be here today and she's not <laughs> so i'm gonna have lots of disappointed people but yeah she's doing her own thing she's very happy i'm feeling fine so that is what is most important so let's see what tomorrow brings. Ooh. good morning um <laughs> it is currently quarter past five in the morning on the 3rd of april so on the 2nd of april n like nothing happened uh, i think that was like day four of baby waffle possibly arriving nothing happened um the hospital rang me and said that they were still backlogged etc etc however this morning i woke up about four yeah, it was about four-ish, like, needing the loo, which is not abnormal, but I'd already been up at about, I think it was about half two, three o'clock. No, yeah. Um, and I don't normally get up, like, in that quick succession. So I was like, oh, this is weird. But I just felt really uncomfortable, and normally it's because she's sat on my bladder, so I thought, I'll just go to the toilet, see if it helps. And, yeah, I went, etc. Um... I got back in bed and still felt really uncomfortable so I got back up again about half four basically did the same thing because I was a bit delirious um because I was tired and then got back into bed and I was kind of getting like period pain that was like waving and I was like oh this could be something um and I just couldn't stand being in bed like laid down she was also kicking the bejeebas out of me while i was in bed so i thought maybe it's just her like kicking etc like she's kicking something she shouldn't be so i'll go and sit downstairs for a bit like get myself comfortable etc so it's now quarter past five phil's still in bed phil knows i'm downstairs because i thought i better tell him where i'm going just in case this this escalates quickly um, and I'm using the Ovia pregnancy app, which I've used all the way through my pregnancy. I also use the Ovia ovulation app to track fertility to start with, um, and like cycles and stuff. And I just tracked the last 
four, which I know is not a lot. Um, like, waves of pain, we'll call them for now. <laughs> However, I am 99% certain that they are contractions, which is amazing because <laughs> I didn't expect my body to potentially go into labour itself. This could turn out to be nothing. It could just be her kicking me in regular intervals. But at the minute, if we can see that, Oh, 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 there we go. They are about six to seven minutes apart and a pretty consistent length in time. So, I'm just documenting this, that this is quarter past five on the 3rd of April and this could be the start of something. It could, like, dwindle and go into absolutely nothing. However, today I'm expecting to go to the hospital anyway and be induced. So if she has started herself, that would be lovely. Um, as I say, Phil's in bed. I'm quite happy leaving him there because I don't think he actually came to bed till about 3am. Which he's going to regret quickly if she decides to come today. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep monitoring this and I will check in with you when I know more, <laughs> more than like three or four contractions. Potentially, waves of pain, not sure. When I say waves of pain, it's like literally that like tightness that you get when you're um, on your period. There might be another one coming now. Yes, there is. It is literally like six minutes apart. Well, this is a development. Trying not to look at like the timer when I'm like timing them just because I don't want to kind of like bias the results a bit. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, it needs to be a minute long. So, oh, yes, it definitely, I can definitely feel it for a minute. So I try not to look at it. So I don't really know how long it is. Right, anyway, that was, have a look, five minutes, 57 seconds since the last one. So they're about six minutes apart-ish. So we'll see how this goes. And yeah, like I said, I'll report back. It is now 6.45. And I've just had a phone call off the hospital. I was going to ring them about seven just to let them know what was happening. Because I knew that they were going to ring me this morning to like induce me like hormonally um, anyway. And yeah, they've just rang asking me to come in for half eight. So we're going to do that even though like I've gone into potentially gone into labour naturally which is good because it means that they won't have to induce me and um, so they still want me to come in for half eight anyway and um, just to kind of assess me and see where we're at um I should be at least at least two centimeters because I was the other day if not more now um because it has been a few days so I've just been awake for long, which I don't think is too drift at <laughs> um I'm still tracking my contractions. They are about every 10 minutes now. They have slowed down, but they're still for the same length of time. Um, so I'm gonna grab some breakfast before I go. When I came down at about half four, was it half four or five? Can't remember. Um, I did have some waffles because I was starving hungry and I'm really hungry again. So I'm just, my body's hungry, so I'm just gonna feed it. So I'm gonna have some, um, what they called Weetabix now. Um, I think Phil's gonna have some porridge just so we've had something to eat before we head off. Ooh, bright lights because it's about a half an hour drive, well, 20 minute drive to the hospital. We need to get ready as well. So we've got about an hour to get sorted, get breakfast, etc. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really happy. Honestly, this morning when I woke up and I was like, this could be contractions elated like I don't think I've ever <laughs> ever expected myself to be so happy that my body was doing this itself so that is good news I hope 
it has been I mean it's been pretty frequent it feels like what I'd expect it to feel like even though I didn't know what I would have expected um but yeah hopefully this is the start of everything going naturally which is kind of the way I wanted it to go anyway and fingers crossed I mentioned to the hospital when they were on the phone that I would like to use the pool or at least try to use the pool um might hate it never know and she said it's actually free as well because they only have one at our hospital um so that's also brilliant brilliant news because I <laughs> let know my luck it'll be like booked out it'll be fully like busy etc etc so I'm gonna make I'm trying to keep track of my contractions I'm gonna make some wheat bix now and yeah I'll probably check in with you when we arrive at the hospital and give you an update on what is happening then I think I'm also going to set up a group chat once we're there and admitted um um once we're there and admitted with like my mum, Phil's mum, my nana etc like family to let them know what's going on so we don't have to text everyone individually and they can all kind of find out all at the same time sorry I'm <laughs> mid contraction it's not like at this stage it's not that bad I'm mainly focusing on it to make sure I can like work out the length of it um oh that one was only six minutes oh well <laughs> um yeah it the minute it feels like dull period pain that like gets intense for like a second or like 10 seconds or so and then like fades out and I mean everyone thinks that they periods are the most painful thing in the world but mine when I'm not on any kind of contraception are horrific they make me feel physically sick like I can't move I look ill like really really bad so I'm hoping hoping I'm not just a wimp during that and I actually deal with it quite well so I'm hoping that translates into this <laughs> but we never know because we've not done this before so yeah I'm gonna stop procrastinating and make some of these stuff whatever it is this video is gonna be really long because I keep waffling but yeah it's on. So I'm up and about. Um, I've been up and about for a while now. What time did you come in? It was about 10ish, I think, was the last time I filmed anything. It is now five past one. Um, she's coming in to see what progress we've made at about half past one. Um, contractions seem to be getting a lot more frequent. They're about between four and two like three four minutes at the minute so hopefully we're doing good and we don't need the drip but we will see 
um, had some dinner, which was actually really quite nice. Had an option of uh, cauliflower broccoli bake, which I was like, oh, this is going to be fun options. And then we had combi pie with gravy mm -hmm. and jacked it up with beans, which is another favourite fresh. So that was good. Ow. Oh, <laughs> Be back in a bit. Officially here, she's just chilling over there. She arrived at um, 9.29 this evening on April the 3rd, 2021. I'll, just, I'll do a completely separate video explaining out of everything that happened, etc. But I'm feeling pretty good. Just had a ham sandwich that we brought in with us. Um, and I had my toast with jam on and they actually gave me a hot chocolate, which was really nice. Um, so I'm just having a couple of ice tonic drinks just to get my fluids back up because I've not been able to eat anything since lunchtime and I'm just having a bag of crisps and then I'm gonna kind of sort myself out I think but yeah she's here let me just show you her hmm? oh, I showed you baby waffle she's currently got the hip ups I will show you her name once we get home. She's so cute. Aww. Um, oh, I can't even hold this camera up. My arms are a bit weak. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how long we're staying in for. It's currently five to midnight. Um, as I said this morning, I woke up at four. So they just seem to be happy for us to be in here, which I'm not going to complain about. So I'm going to finish my crisps. I then have to buzz them because I want to get up. Because um, I'm not allowed to get up without supervision, probably because I am a bit shaky, <laughs> just to make sure I'm okay. And then, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we get to go home tonight because she's already had a bottle. Um, she's had enough to satisfy the midwives that she's okay, which is good. She seems to be doing all right from the hiccups that she seems to have developed but yeah she's like the cutest little bambino ever good morning it is sunday the 4th of april day one of having little princess with us and um, yeah, so I have just been discharged from the hospital. I'm just waiting for Phil to come and collect me. Um, it is, what time is it? Oh, I think it must have been discharged about half past eight. Um, Phil went home last night about 2am. Um, yeah, it must have been about 2ish. Um, I think I explained last night about what was going on <laughs> last night. Yeah, she's an absolute angel at the moment. She's just asleep. Although she's had a bit of a nightmare feeding this morning. She did not want to take her milk, um, but we got it down her eventually. She does need another bottle, probably not long after we get out home. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling okay this morning. Um, not, sounds ridiculous, not as sore as I thought I would be like from watching like other videos and things it's not actually like post hasn't been that bad although i'm probably still running on adrenaline because i think i've had about an hour and a half i wouldn't even call it sleep it was more rest <laughs> um yeah so this morning i've had a protein bar i've had about two isotonic drinks um my throat is killing me from um, all of the gas and air. Apart from that, we seem to be good. Oh no, do we not like me talking? 
no apparently not um yeah so we're all good we're gonna head home and i will probably let you know her name when we get home and um, phil has to bring the car seat in and drop it at the front door then the nurses well the midwives will bring that in here i'll put her in and then they'll help me take everything out but yeah so far so good okay i will do a full oh god one thing is my arms are knackered like it's probably because i've not had much sleep and i am quite drained and i didn't have a lot of food yesterday um but i can like barely hold, hold this camera up but yeah she's an actual little angel aren't you you are and this cute blanket is a hospital blanket as well so cute we're just waiting for daddy to go get us now yeah April. It is baby's second day at home. Um, it's now about one o'clock. Midwife has just been. Um, just about to sort out some dinner and I just wanted to share her name with you. She's just chilling down here and this is officially baby Daisy. Baby Daisy Grace. And she's so cute. She's just got that blanket behind her because she keeps sicking up. <laughs> so we're all doing well. Oh, big yawn. We're all doing well. Um, 
And yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> oh dear, right. We're gonna I'll see you later. I'll do a pregnancy kind of labour delivery story. It'll probably be my next video. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, stay safe and like, subscribe, all that jazz. Bye. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out.